Thank you very much for coming to the final Arts and Humanities Research Seminar for this semester. I would be delighted to welcome our postgraduate student, Joanna Parker, who today is talking about um, both of the Shays. Um, Joanna did her degree here in English, and she followed this up with an MA in Russian Studies at UCL. And she's now studying for her PhD in the second year with Professor Alan Simmons and Dr. Carl Thompson, also on the collaboration between the Shelleys in literature. Joanna is a supremely Renaissance woman, talented lady. Um, she is uh, not only an, an actress and an artist. If you've seen this picture here on the poster, this was Joanna's own portrait. Um, and she has, of course, also published her volume of poetry. Song of the River, and has just been shortlisted for the Outspoken Poetry Award. She's also writing a novel on the collaboration between the two Shelleys. So we are in the presence of someone who extremely know, knows extremely well exactly what she's talking about, imaginatively and academically. So thank you very much, Joan, and look forward to your paper. So I have made a PowerPoint, which is very exciting, and you're, you're going to love it. Uh, so please enjoy that. Uh, what, what I'm looking at today is Mary Shelley and Percy Shelley, how they write together. This is the main focus of my research. And I'm specifically looking at their shared journal and how in this journal they write as one person, as one voice, which is very different from any of their other collaborations that they work on. Um, I think it's, it's just important just to kind of set the scene of, of how, how incredibly important writing is to these two people. Uh, um, it's very likely that their literary status is actually part of what brings them together in the first place. Um, so, if they, uh, they meet in 1814, this is the highlight of the PowerPoint, by the way. I spent a lot of time on this and then didn't spend much time on the rest of anything else. But 1814, um, Percy Shelley comes to Mary Shelley's house present, um, to, uh, to her father's house, essentially, to, to meet her father, William Godwin. Um, and he presents himself as a poet and a philosopher. This is the exciting bit. Um, so he has two Gothic novels, which are Sestrosi, St. Irvin. Uh, two books of poems, Questions, Fragments of Margaret Nicholson, Poetry of Victor and Kazair, two poets of, on political philosophy, which are the Necessity of Atheism and the Address to the Irish People, and his great poem, Queen Mab. Uh, Mary Shelley is only 16 years old at this time. She has not actually published anything. She may have authored some things that were in her father's collection, but that is uh, unclear, if that is, actually, if that is certain. Um, however, she was... She had great literary credentials just by being the child of great uh, author and philosopher Mary Wollstonecraft, and indeed similarly uh, William Godwin. But even at this age, she was writing um, political essays, which would be read at family gatherings, gatherings of friends. Um, and she'd written some stories, some short stories, and she'd worked on a novel. But these are all lost, so we, we don't really know what these were like. Um, but very early on in the relationship, um, Percy Shelley wrote down that she had promised to show him the, um, the products of her mind from before they met. And so there is this kind of, mm -hmm. there's a, a great room that they are, they're, they're interested in each other intellectually and there's very much, you are a writer, I am a writer, let us be writers together. So, um, just give this as a, a little bit of background, um, to hopefully show you how important their writing is to this relationship. So, they, 1814, they run away, um, despite the fact that uh, he is married to somebody else, she is not married. Um, and in the first weeks of their relationship, they keep a journal, um, which if anybody's interested, this one. These are Christian shares, I hope. Um, so they, they keep this shared journal together, and these first six weeks are very rigorously documented. They run away from, from England, and they go to the continent, they tour around for a bit. And it's this journal that eventually becomes their publication. Uh, well, it's the source material for their publication, A History of the Six Weeks Tour. It's the travel writing. Um, should also note, neither of them had ever kept a journal before. But it's, it's the first and, and actually their most remarkable of their collaborations. Um, it's been described by um, uh, Heather Bosenwitcher, who writes about it a lot, as the, uh, the genesis of this joint writing process. And what's lovely is that they, they write without any kind of jealousy of authorship. They're always sort of passing things between each other and often following on in, in the same voice. So I'm going to just give you some examples of this. So it begins in uh, Percy Shelley's handwriting. So this is the, the very opening um, of it. 
The night proceeding this morning, all being decided, I ordered the chaise to be ready by four o'clock. I watched until the lightning and the stars became pale. At length it was four. I believed it not possible that we should succeed. Still there appeared to lurk some danger, even uncertainty. I went. I saw her. She came to me. This is, I very much like at the end here, this, this shift of, of subject that I saw her and she is coming to him. Um, so several, several paragraphs take up this sort of thrilling escape, but all in, um, in Percy's hand. Um, it's written very traditionally. We have pronoun, first person pronoun is I for Percy, and Mary Shelley is she for Mary. Um, we learned the, uh, from the book that Mary was very ill at this time because they were undertaking uh, a lot of travelling, a lot of sea journey, she's not a good traveller. Um, so it's unclear if at this point there was any plan for her to ultimately be included um, uh, to be a fellow writer or if it, if it was just that she was unable to write at that exact time. But um, this is the first entry, which is just a couple of days, just a, a day indeed later, this is the 29th, the previous one was the 28th. I'm just going to read this out. I said, Mary, look, the sun rises over France. We walked over the sands to the inn. We were shown into an apartment that answered the purpose of both the sitting and sleeping room. Mary was there. Shelley was also with me. Whenever they say Shelley, it's referring to, to Percy Shelley. Um, this is lovely, because we go from I at the beginning to me at the end, and they are now two completely different people. Um, I must be Percy, and me must be Mary. Um, kind of the, the, even the introduction of Mary's name at this point, it's, it's very unnecessary to go, Mary was there. Obviously she's there. Mary, look, we walked over the sands, she must be there. But there was kind of re-establishing, here we both are. And I just want to show you because part of this is in Mary Shelley's handwriting. So if you see here, everything in blue is Percy Shelley's writing. And so he actually starts this, Shelley was also, and then she adds, with me to just complete that, which is just this very nice. Who, who is writing here? Who, who is passing the pen at what point? At what point is she dictating to him, and at what point is she just grabbing the pen off him and saying, No, no, no I want to contribute. Um, just to show you, this is the manuscript. Um, so this is uh, Mary was there, Shelley was also, and then obviously she's added this in her own writing with me. It's this lovely playing around, and, and um, from this point on, the journal um, it, it stops being essentially in, uh, entirely in first person. Um, it strays massively, the pronouns are absolutely all over the place. Um, but usually the most common one that comes out is we. Uh, so one of the, the next substantial entry that she makes, he continues for, for a while, is... Um, Following on from this, it's actually just following on from what Percy's already been writing. So he writes, the village, this is, they're describing the villages that they're going through. The village was also completely destroyed. The inhabitants told us that the Cossacks had not left one cow in the village. Mary follows it absolutely seamlessly, notwithstanding the entreaties of the people who eagerly desired us to stay all night, we continued our route to Tourmaison. So, us and we, there's no note, there's nothing in the voice that shows that we have a different writer. It's only in the handwriting that we can tell somebody else has picked up the pen. Um, okay, so the... Uh, what was I going to say? So Chris uses um, we by default. Only occasions does he use I if he's saying something very specifically about him. For example, I sold my watch chain. That is something that he has done by himself, and it kind of needs to, to clarify that it's not both of them, it's, it's his specific chain. Um, but he also writes about himself in the third person if Mary isn't there. So, for example, uh, Jane and Shelley go to the ass merchant, he writes, they go to buy an ass. Um, and he's now writing Jane and Shelley. I think the, the role of Jane, uh, or indeed Claire Claremont, I'm going to talk about her in a little bit, is, is very interesting. Um, Percy uses we for himself and Mary. He uses we for himself, Mary, and Jane. If it's just him and Jane, or if it's just Mary and Jane, they get written Shelley and Jane, or Mary and Jane. So we is only the two of them together. Now, I want to talk a little bit uh, about style, because uh, this is something that Witcher originally points out, but I think there's still a lot of work to be done on. Mary modifies her style to match Percy's style. He begins it, and she continues in his voice. 
Um, so if we take the, the flight from England as they're, they're running away, Percy um, is always uh, embellishing these things with beautiful descriptions. So he writes this very of a fact, an emotional statement. I was divided between anxiety for Mary's health and terror lest our pursuers should arrive. But then just an, uh, the next paragraph, he's writing, the evening was most beautiful. The sound slowly receded, we felt secure. <coughs> there was a little wind, the sails flapping in the breeze, the moon rose, the night came on, uh, and with the night, a slow, heavy swell. It's this, ver- this sort of poeticism that he's sort of so known for, and he's, he's decorating absolutely everything. Uh, in the diary that Mary keeps later on, we never get anything of this. When she's keeping a diary about herself, she will never describe the thing unless it's an you know, extreme lightning storm, full stop. That's the kind of level of description we get from her. But we can actually see her trying to make her language more like his. And um, very much like this is, uh, we can see here, this is uh, in her, her writing, in the, in the Green Man, you can see she's making all these false starts. So just as we've seen this in the past, she says not past, put it. The engagement of fortifications, a nice little beautiful scene. She's trying to use these more uh, elaborate words, long words, words that will make her sound more intellectual and indeed more poetic. Um, so this is kind of very much the, the style that the journal, journal continues in for most of the, for these six weeks. Then they return to England. Um, they're separated then for various reasons. Percy Shelley has to live separately. Um, he's uh, in fear of, he's, there's a warrant for his arrest essentially, so he has to hide. Um, the journal is left in Mary's possession. She keeps it up and pretty quickly it turns into her natural style. Um, of this very kind of pared down, just a list of facts, this happened, this happened. Um, and she writes of herself without pronoun, and she starts to call, uh, talk about Percy as the other. So, finish political justice. She doesn't need to see Mary finishes. This is her diary now. Read Howard Williams. Shelley goes to the city. So, he, he is now kind of somebody else. If it's we, it is still always the two of them. But it's become her diary. Now, what is interesting is that here we have a slight reversal because occasionally, once they're living together again, Percy Shelley still contributes, but he now contributes in Mary's style. For example, uh, Wednesday 23, Mary walked, S went to Minerva Library, Mary Pet recovered, reproached this in the evening, sit up late. His, his beautiful flourishes, his long winded, I'm going to now describe the evening, describe the clouds, that's gone. He's now said, this is now Mary's, I was joined seamlessly in with her voice. Um, I mean, Mary would continue the journal for many, many years um, after his last entry, and indeed many years after his death. Um, so we can see plenty of what was what we could call her instinctive journal style, which is this very pared down. Uh, there have been some suggestions by several scholars, um, particularly uh, Corbett, suggests that there is a sexual division of labour that corresponds to this now familiar division of household tasks along gender lines. And he writes by a uh, quote that. Uh, on the return to England, Mary Godwin is charged with the keeping of domestic record. And I, I think this has very much been used to make a point, and I, I think it's something to be very, very wary of, because it's very stretched. Mary Shelley takes this ownership of the diary while Percy isn't there, and the things that she writes about certainly can be called a domestic record. It's an intellectual record. The thing that she is most rigorous in recording is her reading and her writing. Every single thing they read is well. I don't know if they read something she didn't write down, but if she read more than she wrote down, she read phenomenally. <laughs> so every single day there is something that she read is written down. Uh, she doesn't usually say what she is writing, but she will often write just the word write or work. She usually only uses the name of the text if she's actually finished it. Or finished Frankenstein. That's a big proud moment. Mm-hmm. Everything else is just write or work. Um, Am I doing okay for time? Has anybody gone out of time? I have no idea. You keep going. You're I'll keep going, okay. <laughs> just, just leave when, when you're done. Or okay. we'll get food. Um, okay, so one thing I do want to say. What's there? Um, I want to talk a little bit about the, the... This is a private diary, and there's been a lot written about not assuming that a diary is private. I, I think in many cases that's very, very useful. Um, there are two main uh, reasons why we can look at this. One is that this journal is actually edited for publication. It's the source material that becomes History of Six Weeks Tour. 
So we can kind of see this is the private version, this is the public version. On one hand, all uh, huge, huge amounts of personal detail are taken out for History of Six Weeks Tour, which is partly because it's anonymous, partly because there's plenty that they were getting up to that's quite shocking and wouldn't be approved of by the majority of readers. The mere fact they're living together are married. Uh, in History of Six Weeks Tour, you can assume that this young couple are married. It sounds all nice, but they're just not getting into the details. Um, it is also, uh, I mean, there's no editing of the diary itself. So there is the kind of thing that we just saw with Mary Shelley editing as she's writing. There are quite a few mid-sentence revisions, but nobody ever comes back to it and changes things. Um, there are plenty of grammar mistakes. There are plenty of just omissions of, of punctuation. Uh, just uh, skim back. If we just see these kind of dashes and things, but also... We see there are... Um, Capitalization isn't, isn't standard. Uh, we have all, all kinds of fragments of things, and, that, and that's absolutely fine. That's sort of the accepted. Uh, there. Um, I don't know if I was going to say, where am I? Mm, yes, so there's no, there's no kind of editing this. Um, with the history of Six Weeks Tour, we can see uh, there are many. There are many revisions made, many details are omitted, not just things that are too personal, um, but things that actually affect the narrative. Um, so it seems that it was mostly Mary Shelley doing the editing, um, and it was a couple of years later that they came back and decided to make a travelogue out of it. But just, you know, she would quite ruthlessly cut out some of Shelley's descriptions if it was interrupting the pace, or if, um, if things just didn't seem to be quite flowing right. But also there is a lovely reason uh, nature of this diary that is kind of epistolary. There is this way that it is a means of them to talk to each other. Um, there are some very unusual things. Like we get them talking about themselves. This is Mary Shelley writing in her own hand. Mary expressed these fears in a very complaining tone. <laughs> now, if you're writing this in a diary, there, this is obviously either meant to be uh, an apology or a bit of a grumble. <laughs> and so we kind of there's plenty that we can't quite work out what the intention of it is, but the other person reading it obviously would have. There is a, a very clear intended readership. This is a similar thing. Um, again, this is in Percy Shelley's hand. And he writes about himself in the third person. And it kind of seems like he's writing from Mary's point of view. Uh, so the banker promised an, hour, uh, an answer of two hours. At the conclusion of the time, he sends for Shelley, and to our astonishment and consolations. So who is our here? I think, I think that's interesting. Um, to our social consolations, S return staggered under the weight of a large canvas bag full of silver. <laughs> S alone looks grave on this occasion, for he alone clearly apprehends that Rex and Luke's and Lou's door are like the white and flying cloud of noon that is gone before one can say Jack Robinson. <laughs> so, this is clearly so. Our could be all three of them. Um, it could just be Mary and Claire. Um, Mary and Jane. Changes her name to Claire, it's something slightly confusing. Uh, but you have this kind of image of he is returning with money. They are, thank goodness we have some money, we can all relax. And he doesn't seem to be able to say it verbally at the time. He doesn't seem to be able to speak it aloud. But he's writing it down to say, look, Mary, this isn't as good as, as you may think it is. Um, again, there are a couple of little things. Uh, Mary writes, Shelley's in a jocosely horrible mood. <laughs> Again, that kind of sounds like a little bit of a dig. But um, probably one of the more lovely ones is this, this one I love in Mary Shelley's hand. Um, Jane's talking about her stepsister. Is Jane very gloomy? She's very sullen with Shelley. Well, never mind, my love. We are happy. She's addressing him directly there. So clearly there are a lot of tensions in the household, particularly with, with Jane at this time. There are all kinds of arguments going around. But she's actually saying, I, I know you're upset about this, and that's, look, it's okay, we are happy. And the we here is, is very clearly the two of them excluding, excluding um, Jane. So if, if I have time, I would very quickly just like to talk about um, poor, poor Jane. Um, <laughs> um, Jane, Jane changed her name after her life to Claire, so she's very often known as Claire Claremont. Um, at this time, she was called Jane, so I'll call her Jane. Uh, absolutely fascinating person in the relationship of Mary and 
controversy and in a way she sheds a lot of light on their relationship in what she is excluded from. Um, so she runs away with them. When they go to the continent, she, she runs away with them. She's Mary's stepsister. She runs away with them. Quite unusual. You don't usually take your sister with you when you elope. <laughs> but I've done it so many times. Um, Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so Mary, um, Jane is incredibly absent from this diary. So she does things. Um, Jane and Shelley go to town. Uh, Jane is friend by the rats. Jane does this. But she's as incidental as the last one is. She, she's just as much as we look at this town, we see this, we meet a person, there is Jane. She isn't part of the journal. Um, I mean, there's, there's a bit Mary writes, I've got this one. Yes. Uh, the sea is horribly tempestuous and Mary horribly sick, nor is Shelley much better. And you do so go, and Jane? <laughs> How is she doing? She's left out of so many of these things where well, she must have been there. She was on the crossing with them, they were on the ship, but she, she's left out of it. And so she's the only one omitted, not merely from writing the journal, but presumably also from reading it. And about a week, a week after they start their journal, she buys her own journal and starts writing. <laughs> <laughs> and the tragic thing is, she's really embarrassed. Which is, she's, so, her diaries are so entertaining. I would thoroughly recommend reading them just for your own pleasure. Because they, so, she has such a wonderful voice. Um, Claire, very early on, uh, Jane, very early on, persuaded by Lord Byron that she had no literary talent whatsoever, and she burnt the novel that she'd written. And, and that's sort of one of the greatest losses to literature, I feel, because she's right in the heart of all, all these amazing people. Um, and, and yet she's excluded from them all the time. Um, so they, they use, Mary and Percy use the diary as a way of moaning about Claire. <laughs> we sort of say, oh, she, she did this, she's annoying. Percy Shelley waxes philosophical on how she cannot feel friendship and she does not have a truly elevated mind. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's just sort of. I suppose it's nice that he's writing that rather than saying it to her face, but it does, it shows how they elevate themselves as writers and how they are part of their own shared um, uh, shared diary. They write about each other's writing as well. I think what's most interesting, they write about what the other person is writing. So Percy writes about Mary's novel, Hate, which has now been lost. Um, uh, Mary writes, I don't know if I put this in here as well. Um, Mary writes, we, we arrange our apartments and write part of Shelley's romance. That's very intriguing because the we there is that we are writing the romance, we arrange our apartments and write part of Shelley's romance is that we're doing it together. Very, very difficult to kind of work out where the we starts and, and stops. But it is clearly Shelley's romance and hate is clearly Mary's hate. Mary's not hate. So they keep them very separately. Um, yeah, I shall round up there, and just to say, uh, this is an incredibly interesting diary because it doesn't have the sense of authorship that their their novels and their stories do have, um, and it's remarkably uh, undermined in, in Shelley scholarship. And so it's, it's yeah, that's that's me. If anybody has a question. <laughs> Jane would have eloped with him from the beginning because it sounds like a strange thing to yeah. do. So the, the reason that is given is that Jane speaks French and they're going to France. Um, also she had been the middle man all through their secret romance. She'd been the one passing letters between them. Um, and I think had she had the chance to run away with Percy, if she been well enough, she certainly would have. <laughs> um, indeed she goes off and uh, when they were trying to learn, she actively hunts down Lord Byron and gets herself pregnant. And so she says, right, I, I, I'm going to have my own scandal now. Thank you very much. <laughs> so it's very much a part of her nature. But it, yeah, the official reason given is this kind of, she could speak French. But she stays with them throughout <coughs> their relationship, more or less. So it's, 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 it's a complicated one. Mm. And the fact that she moves from, from Jane to Claire sort of plays into your, your piece as well. I love what you did with the porous boundaries, this fluidity between the, 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 the I and the we and the, the, the she. And wondered, in that one of the very, very first sequences you showed us, possibly the first first image, where we've got the S full stop and then the heavy following follow that. Um, is that, that as I understood it, was his first entry into this document. 
Because one of the themes that runs through what you're talking about is the, you know, the question of authorial identity and, and yeah. identity of authors. Mm -hmm. And you, you have a brief moment there where he's unsure what to call himself. Does he yeah. refer to himself as S and is he going to refer to himself as Shelley? And yeah. of course, she, she picks up on this and sometimes he's S and sometimes yes. he's Shelley. Um, so I, I rather like uh, the, the, the part of that fluidity between the I and the we then, then affects the naming itself. Yes, and actually, he's the only one who gets initialed. It's never M. <laughs> So, just one other yeah. thing. It was interesting listening to you speaking about Slavi here anyway. But, but it was interesting in, in your slippage, you moved from diary to journal to diary to journal to diary to journal. And yes. it, it is something that, that, that it is problematic, isn't it? Because some of the style seems to be more, um, as you say, of a, a journal which is aimed to be written up later on. It's almost a calendar at some point. Mm -hmm. We did this on the stage, we did this. Yeah. And then other little bits and pieces, they let themselves go. And that, that negotiation is itself intriguing because what is the status of the document? Um, and then there's presumably nothing between what we call in the you know, a, a, a journal mm -hmm. and then the six weeks um, that the uh, journal that gets published. If there's nothing there and there's no marking up in the diary, it suggests there has to be an interim document, doesn't there? Yes. There's got to be a rewriting of this, mm -hmm. um, which, which is then edited for, for, for publication. Yeah, and, and in that process, they do all, all kinds of stealing things from each other and uh, just sort of further the, the no voice thing that they're they're taking things from each other's letters. They're so the diary is entirely signed M mm -hmm. in History of Six Weeks Tour, and then there are some letters signed S. But Mary takes from what Percy has written in the in the journal, but also Percy's letters to other people. So she's there's a rich kind of I can just steal from this and, and pop this in there. Because I think you were convincing in the sense that they borrow each other's styles as well. Mm -hmm. So you get this, it, what starts out as a sort of dialogic narrative actually becomes far more fused, doesn't it? And you can't tell them apart. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you know that you talk about, well, just like, you know, together, I'm going to open it, is it going to be the same that we are writing together? Not, they don't write it down. <laughs> um, we, we do know from um, from other people's records that they sort of sit, they sit, they have two desks side by side, and they're they're always leaning over to each other's works. And this is a lovely little image, but there is a great deal of discussion when they are writing, and, and tragically they weren't recording. <laughs> <laughs> you need one of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, <coughs> Fascinating. And presumably those, the, the, the journals, are, they're not published. No. Uh, um, There's the public one and the private one. There's a new looking at the private one. Yes. Um, right. Um, <coughs> three questions. Oh, right. right. Okay. No, no, three parts to one question. <laughs> I've got to say that. The first one, when you, you had the entry there where he started off on being concerned about the case, and all of a sudden, there's a gap. And I know you've got the dots in, but yeah. then, He's, um, he's flourishing, sounding like a poet. Yes. So it occurs to me, I wonder whether he actually <coughs> wrote the entry in the journal at the same time. Yes. Whether, in fact, you know, he wrote that and was a bit fed up, and wouldn't say he perked up a bit later on. And so added that bit, you know, so he got over that. That led me on to wondering um, whether, in fact, she took the journal over, in a sense, mm -hmm. and if he actually got bored with which leads me on to a third, third point, is whether there's been any research done on the change of the division mm -hmm. in diary and journal writing. Do men write diaries and journals much less than women or whatever? Has there been any study on that? No, I'm terrible. I start off in January. Every year. <laughs> and I don't get to the end of January. I'm back in the <laughs> Um, but I know friends of mine make it. Smashing dogs. But when the January of your mind is written, this year. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, that's it. So there are sort of three parts to it, isn't it? Yeah, um, I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure somebody will have looked at that. I haven't looked at um, yeah. the diaries beyond that. Because I was wondering whether he kept a separate journal himself. No, no, no he never did. So they both had <coughs> notebooks. Right. Which again were often shared and often they would kind of be passed between each other. Um, and it's in those notebooks that we often see um, 
the kind of the things like uh, shopping lists, essentially, and, and uh, bills to pay and stuff like that, but also great works of poetry and literature. Um, Run me the first point. I've, I've, I've lost. Oh, that was about the you know he, oh, he yes, wrote the entry in the journal at two different times. Yes, um, that that is something I've been trying to work out, and also trying to work out how much is written at the time, particularly in that first elopement. Mm-hmm. It's very much we are there. Mary rests her head on my knee. It sounds like she's literally leaning her head on his knee while he's writing. Please excuse the woman you're writing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And actually, this is being written on a ship. I mean, is, is that madness to think? Oh, he's trying. Yeah. Uh, so, this, I, I don't know is the answer to that. There, there are some clues that. We have seven minutes, I suppose, moving from paragraph to paragraph. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The flow of the ink. Yes. Yeah. 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 But you know, two different. Seems to be two different moods. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I have I've omitted um, a good chunk there. <laughs> it's probably uh, problem, isn't it? Mm. I mean, I have missed quite a, quite a chunk there, um, mm-hmm. but it, I think I think it's really just these these come up everywhere, so that it's it's not so. This isn't a striking change for him because he he's always describing. You know, however, oh, that we have a horrible hotel and, and the, they don't let us sleep on the beds. We have to sleep on the floor. Um, however, the moon is bright and beautiful. That, that is very much. Just, his style that he, he has to write this stuff in mm. and it all gets cut out in the history of six weeks to Mary he's just like I don't know that <laughs> <laughs> well maybe thinking that or she can read this so I better put that in you know about how horrible it's been because I share that with her but then it's the old serious stuff yeah <laughs> you know yeah the part. Mm. Yes. Yes, have I answered all three of course you okay any, anything else? Yeah, it's fascinating. Hmm? It's fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I like it. There been um, studies made of that, those particular journals and diaries. Is, is there a lot of secondary literature? There, there's not a huge amount at the moment, actually, quite, quite surprisingly. Um, a lot has been used, it's been used for biographical purposes, and not a lot, of course, but not, not a lot actually exploring the diary, the diary itself and how, how it sort of functions as a as a work of literature and, um, mm-hmm. and how that all kind of relates into the history of the Six Weeks Tour as well. And, and can you say something about that? How does it relate to the Six Weeks Tour? I mean, is the Six Weeks Tour very much, very much based on this? Do they add a lot? Is there a lot of embellishment? There, there isn't a huge amount added. I think it's mostly taken away. Okay. Um, there are things also taken... This, this is the point where they actually do take things from Jane's diary. Um, <laughs> um, but mostly it's just this kind of cutting and pasting of um, Percy's letter here, or Mary's letter here, yes. Mary's diary here. Um, oh, I have something more to say, I completely lost it. Um, oh, sorry, that completely slipped my head. I was sitting there and it's suddenly gone as fast as it came. But she showed a large number of journeys. You said she carried them on after. Oh, yes! Just went through and through. Where are these held? Um, most of them are in the body. Yeah. Sure. These are very thin, nice and simple. Yes. Oh, well, there are plans to publish them in a facsimile edition so that we can see. <laughs> that I'm aware of. Um, there is a lot of digitising of. Um, of Godwin's papers in that article, so I'm hoping that these ones are also. <laughs> Slowly yeah. making their way along, um, hoping that's next on the list. That would be lovely. Yeah, actually, this was an exhibition. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And so yeah. it's a nice yeah. 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 She's not, you know, not only writing extra work, but she's actually completing a sentence, completing a word. Yeah. 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 Even completing the word. Uh, I, I, Really want to know at what point. Yeah. Does he? Does you know? Does he get up and go? Oh wait, I've got to do something. <laughs> and that's 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 really, isn't it? That's one of the big uh, chores that you have as a, as a, as a researcher. I mean, I've been doing some research in archives, looking at poor old guardians mm-hmm. when they're minutes you're handwritten. That's sometimes impossible. Mm-hmm. 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 Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you handwritten. Yes. And you must have had a tremendous job. Oh, God, yes. It's, it's all Have you written it? I mean, you've 
transcribe it all. Um, so there, there are quite a, quite a few subscriptions here and there of, 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 right. of bits, um, which Just thank goodness. Yeah, um, so that I can find here and there, but there is a lot of work. Just what is that? Well, uh, this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I think they probably do have the Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the same sort of. Um, not at any point could it be said that. Um, he left holes for her to fill, for instance. Not long well, they did, because then I guess at some point the, sometimes perhaps there would be gap issues and whatever. But not, not in this. They in other, together and write other collaborations they write, there are occasions of I'm going to leave the space here and you're going to put that in. I don't know what this word means or want maybe a better word or something like that. But in this, there, there is none of that. It's, it's completely fine. Mm -hmm. I love that it's written under the line there that Captain Davidson came in and told us that a fat lady had arrived. Specific request if any fat ladies arrive, I want you to tell us. Yes, because they might have seen it. Who had said that I had run away with the daughter? Yeah, that's um, Jane's mother. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. Jane's I mother follows the one. <laughs> oh, she goes over the sea to, to France. She arrives a few days after them. She says, I want my daughters back. And uh, they have a heck of a fight about it, but she leaves empty handed. Yeah.